With a new Disney fairy tale movie comes a new array of friendships to talk about, and maybe also a few less savory bonds. Welcome to Wicked Binge. Today, we're taking another trip to the Kingdom of Rosas and ranking Disney's wish relationships from healthy to toxic. Now, this is a feel-good movie full to the brim with mostly healthy relationships, and the gold medal of healthiness has to go to the relationship between Star and everyone. Making a wish upon a star is synonymous with Disney movies. There's a whole song about it in one of the originals. And heck, Family Guy even parodied it one time. I need a so of course, with this movie making a character out of that very star, it's only natural that its relationship with the general public would be pretty positive, to say the least. But as for what justifies calling it the most healthy relationship, not only does Star grant the greatest desires in people's hearts just because he feels like it, willing to take on King Magnifico when he allows forbidden magic to take over his mind. At the end of the movie, he says a tearful goodbye to Asha, because there are more people throughout the world who need his magic. He's He's like the fairy godparent of the whole world. He'll handle anything from letting a family of mushrooms talk to saving an entire kingdom from being dominated by a complete psychopath, and asks for nothing in return. I'm not sure how you could have a healthier relationship, really. And Star never seems to grow tired of granting wishes for good, well-meaning people, which ensures he earns the top spot on our list. Our silver medal of healthiness goes to a relationship we never get to see in real time, that being Asha and her father. Over the years, there have been plenty of memorable father and child bonds in Disney movies. Geppetto and Pinocchio, Marlin and Nemo, Simba and Mufasa, and now Asha and her father. They may not have given him a name, but they gave him something even better, a purpose. Asha enjoys drawing and animating via flipbooks, and one of her favorite prompts is the memory of her sitting with her father on a tree, looking out at the stars. He was someone Asha and her mother could lean on, and someone who encouraged them to pursue inspiration and be a good person in general. Maybe one day we'll see more of him, but for now, the little we know about him is enough to conclude that he's a good father, especially considering how dearly his family misses him. Taking home the bronze medal of healthiness is the relationship between Asha and Valentina. What's a main character in a kid's movie without at least one animal sidekick? As far as his role in the movie, Val is a lot like Pascal from the movie Tangled. He's just a cute little goat who's always there for Asha, sticking by her during her day-to-day -day activities and running after her faster than anyone when she sad. When he's granted the ability to talk, he still has nothing but positive stuff to say about her, and wants nothing more than to help her on her journey. On Asha's end, she dotes on Val a lot, caring for him like family, and even making him cute little goat pajamas to wear. The worst we could say about their bond is that Val's talkative nature can sometimes cause them a bit of trouble, but given that he's literally three weeks old, we'll chalk that up to an experience. Now we can finally get to the rest of Asha's family. Asha, Sabino, and Sakina. We don't see a lot of these three interacting one-on-one -on -one with each other. They're almost solely seen in a group when the family is together. Thankfully, that doesn't take away from their strong family bond. Asha is encouraging to her grandpa Sabino, giving him hope that his 100th birthday will surely finally be the day his wish is granted. Although it did hurt Sabino's heart to be told the truth of how Magnifico doesn't plan to ever grant most of people's wishes, Asha deserves some good granddaughter points for having the courage to tell him the truth. With the good section winding down, we're gonna do something of a lightning round for Asha and the dwarves. I mean, friends. The friends in question are Dahlia, Gabo, Dario, Bazima, Safi, Hal, and Simon, each of whom are based on one of Snow White's seven dwarves and one of whom qualifies as actual dwarf height. No offense, Gabo. I have no response to that. Since the group as a whole is pretty solid, we've decided to just take a few of the more memorable bonds for discussion here. First, let's talk about Dahlia and Asha's friendship. Dahlia is Asha's best friend and more or less the glue that holds the group together. She's able to keep everyone in good spirits while simultaneously being an ear for Asha's worries, since she's definitely the best equipped to understand them. Safi and Bazima also deserve a mention. While neither of these two get much screen time, from what we can tell, 
while they seem to bond over each other's introversion. When Safi is nearly brought to tears at the idea of not being able to feed the chickens, Bazima immediately goes to comfort him, showing there's a sort of unspoken understanding between the two. Dario and Hal deserve a mention too, not necessarily because of their relationship, but because of the way they bond with everyone else. Dario fills that nice, kind of burnt out friend role in the group, the one who will say something wise on occasion, but will usually just be there for you through any highs and lows. Hal is just constantly smiley and does her best to spread positivity. On the lower end of the spectrum, we have Gabo's relationship with the group. He's as loyal as the rest of the gang for sure, but he can be a bit of a pessimist, and he's one of those people whose sarcasm can cross the line into just being mean territory. And for the very last entry in the healthy area, we have the relationship between Simon and his friends. We get it, Simon. The fear of never having your wish granted is valid, especially knowing what you know now, but it doesn't really justify turning your friend into a tyrannical king to ensure it does get granted. To Simon's credit though, he does ultimately apologize to Asha and later appears to be happily friends with the group again, so it seems that all has been forgiven. But unfortunately, not all is well in the Kingdom of Rosas, and gee, I wonder whose fault that could be. These are the toxic relationships. Starting this category off with our bronze medal of toxicity, we have the relationship between Magnifico and Amea. Surprising probably no one, all of these toxic relationships ships have Magnifico involved, but this one is probably the saddest. Before he let Forbidden Magic take over, it was clear that Magnifico genuinely loved and respected his wife. He would vent his frustrations to her, and in return, she would help him with setting up interviews and even do her best to keep him from straying off the deep end. Unfortunately, he strayed regardless. Magnifico gave in to the book of Forbidden Magic and became an absolute monster, and this not only allowed the darker side of his personality to take over, but it destroyed his bond with his wife, who ultimately had to align herself with the traitor Asha and her friends to take him down. We're placing this as the lesser toxic in the toxic category for the simple reason that, at this point, Magnifico was no longer himself, and before his corruption, he did truly love Amea. But the downfall of their love was nothing compared to the downfall of the good standing between Magnifico and Rosas. Yeah, that's right, everyone. Asha, her friends, Sabino, those random background characters, even that one dude he made cry during an interview. What may have started as an altruistic king doing his best to prevent others from experiencing the tragedies he did most certainly devolved into a paranoid madman striving to keep all the kingdom, and ultimately the world's, magic to himself. Once Magnifico became corrupted by the Book of Forbidden Magic, things only got worse. He crushed wishes with no regard for their holders, despite knowing how much they meant to them, because he grew addicted to the power they yield. He was more than willing to manipulate the kingdom too. When he promised to grant the wish of whoever turned in the traitor, he granted Simon's wish to become his greatest knight, by brainwashing him and causing him immense mental and physical anguish. But out of all Magnifico's sins, none was worse than our gold medal of toxicity, the bond between Magnifico and Star. Or in other words, Magnifico and magic in general. The fact that Magnifico made magic illegal for literally anyone but him to use speaks enough to his character. But to further refuse to grant people the wishes you insist on holding on to is cruel not only to them, but to Star, the source of the magic that grants these wishes. In the movie's final battle, Magnifico traps Star into his wand and uses his magic to capture his entire kingdom and force them to bow to him. That was probably extremely painful for Star, not just physically, but emotionally too. Imagine having all your power harnessed against the good people you've been trying to help for the sake of the man you're trying to save them from. But at least Magnifico will know how you felt in there, just for a lot longer. 